in house guests can be expensive, but you can impress your guests without breaking the bank. And today we're going to put together a delicious turkey broth as well as a turkey that we're going to cook somewhat differently from what we're used to during the holiday. Stay with me. When you think about turkey, you have to think about the fact that it's just another protein. The reason we use it typically at holidays is because of the fact that um, turkey feeds a lot of people. And typically at holidays, if we're cooking, we're usually feeding more than just our normal family. So that's going to be happening this week. So I'm going to take, take a turkey apart. We're going to treat it like a chicken. It's going to get marinated and going to be baked. So I'm really looking forward to your being right here in the kitchen because I need some company while we're enjoying this. So let's get started. I'm going to give my cutting board a very good clean because I'm going to cover it with uh, paper towel, layers of paper towel, and then I'm going to get the turkey out and let, we'll start actually working on it. But we want a really clean surface. So I've just put some Dawn on it and uh, I'm giving it a good wipe off. And then of course, when we finish, I'll actually bleach it, uh, use a bleach cleanser to make sure that I've gotten rid of all the turkey stuff that might have gotten on it, little drippings or whatever. So let's get that done. Let's just get this rinsed and cleaned off. I want a pretty thick layer of paper towel down just so it can pick up any turkey juices that might be present. This is a new Butterball uh, Easy Open Bag. And uh, it has a place down at the bottom that you can just open and then you pull. And there's your turkey. No scissors needed. I'm going to try to drain most of the juices right here into the sink before I get everything off. And put him right there. Now this particular turkey is a 18 pounder. So it's going to quite feed quite a few people. So I'm going to take all of this, I've got a trash bag ready, and uh, I'm going to put all of this into the trash bag. Now I'm going to give my hands another clean before I really get into the bird. And that's a good thing. You try to keep your hands as clean as possible because that will help to cut down on any bacteria or things that you don't want your turkey to have. I already see I have a few things that I'm going to cut 
think I'll take a container, put some paper towel in it. That will help the cleanup process. Those things I don't want. Now at this point, I'm looking for any feathers that may still be on the bird. It's his little wings. You have pieces that you know you're going to want to uh, get rid of. I'm going to go in the cavity. It's in that cavity. Hopefully, we're going to be able to take out our giblets. And when we're looking for those giblets, that's where you're going to probably see a few. Um, here's the bag that has the giblets. I'm going to put them right there. I'm not going to throw that away. Okay, so that's there. Now on the other end, I should have my turkey neck. Any little extra stringy pieces that you may find with your turkey, this is a good time to just kind of cut it off. Trying to work the leg out. I think I'll just give that a clip. Because I'm going to take all this apart anyway. Okay, there we go. Now, we can open our chicken up and start to see the, the pieces, get the feathers out. As we'll use the giblets to make gravy. It's still pretty cold inside, so it's taken just a little bit for the neck to come out. And in fact, I even have a piece of ice that's still in there. Well, that's a good thing. We won't worry about that. All right. Well, that's looking pretty good. Got all the little extras out. I'm going to put them off to the side and get my knife. But before I do that, you know, I'm going to give the hands another rinse. I bought a new uh, knife sharpener. And this one's kind of cool. It has three different types of blades. It has a diamond surface. It has a uh, tungsten surface. And then the last is a ceramic surface. So what I'm going to do is that you start with the diamond surface and run your knife through. And then you run it through the tungsten. And then it finishes at the end. Let's see how that feels. Ooh, that feels pretty good. All right, I'm going to give it just a little rinse. Take off any little shavings we might have. Now remember, I'm treating this like a chicken. So I'm going to cut right here between the leg and the breast on both sides because I'm going to open it up. Okay. And I'm going to try to pop that bone. Okay, I'm taking it over here. And that cuts well. I think my knife needed it. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to pull it back and you'll hear the pop. There it is. So I'm going to remove the leg. Okay, 
So there's our leg. And I'm going to leave him whole like this. But what I am going to do is to give him a little cut right there because I want him to cook well. So right there at that joint, we're going to uh, make sure we can get in there. And you can feel for it. All right, there we go. So there's one. Over here, we might as well work on wing as well. Now, you heard that pop? right out of that joint. Okay, there's our wing. All right, let's flip him over. Let's first make sure if we see any, any little uh, feathers that we get those. Now I'm turning this over. Now, you may not do yours this way. You may do it a little different. And if you do, that's okay. We all learn from probably our moms. Whatever our moms did, that's pretty much what we do. So, uh, even though I have to say my mom didn't usually cut her turkey up. But um, that's something I do. It's a time saver when it comes to baking it. So... I'm going to flip this leg back, and hopefully we'll be able to hear the pop. There he is. There he is. Right there. There he is. He's out. There's one, and find him, find our joint. Let's see if I can put it on this paper towel. That's another good thing about the paper towel is that it really helps to stabilize your turkey when you're handling it. Okay, I felt that. That's good. There he goes. All right, so we've got two turkey legs out, about to have the wing out. I can use my other hand. Wing two. All right, I'm gonna wash a little bit and let's work on our the rest of our carpet. Summer is here, my friends, and we're tackling the task of preparing turkey for a crowd. Whether it's a festive occasion, a holiday feast, or a special occasion, you know, cooking a turkey to perfection and feeding it to a large group can seem rather scary. But fear not, 
because the technique that we're using today is going to be one that is easy to do. It saves you so much time and really allows you to have more oven time when you're preparing for your guest. Now, be sure today to subscribe if you are not already a family member. And don't forget to hit that like button. And please leave a comment because I absolutely love talking to those who visit our channel. So let's get that turkey finished. When you're cutting the breast away from the breastbone, first of all, be very careful. Take your time and cut down the breastbone, pulling the breast gently away from it, and it will just come right off. And you might even see that you may be able to divide that breast into more than one section. And then go over to the other side and start again. Now what I'm going to do with the carcass is that I'm going to season it up, put it into the oven, and roast it. And then, and I'm actually going to make broth with the carcass. And then that way I can um, 
it'll be kind of like a, a roasted turkey broth. Hmm, that sounds pretty good. My aluminum roasting pan, and uh, I'm gonna get it stabilized. And uh, right here, and I'm going to put the turkey back. See if I can cut that, chop it in half. Let me find my, see if I can find a cleaver. And uh, I can find that cleaver. It will make a very quick job of this. I thought a meat cleaver might uh, make a quick job of this, so we'll see. It's still a little frozen. two pieces. I'm going to put the pin side up. I'm going to add the rest of the carcass in. Whew, what a mess. Now we'll get this all cleaned up in just a minute. But I also want in here the any fat or any giblets that I don't think I'll use. I'll save those for the broth. So we'll keep the neck, and actually we can go ahead and roast the neck. We're gonna roast the heart, all the little organ parts. Some of you may be saying, ew, but the organs are gonna add good flavor. take some of their fat off. Okay. Now, got organ pieces, all this down in there. The neck is in there. Okay, so all of this is going in. I'm going to uh, layer some olive oil on it, salt and pepper and um, onion powder, garlic powder is gonna go in this pan. And then we're gonna put it in the oven on um, probably about 450 and let it stay in there until everything is nice and roasted. While we're doing that, we'll also do a little cleanup. Okay, that's gonna go. And I need to give this a good wash. We'll get all that cleaned up and get all this sprayed. I'm using my basic house seasoning, which is black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder. because we want all of this to be very well seasoned. Okay, give things a flip. 
I have to use another spoon, and that's okay. get things in place. We want it to just dispense all of its goodness. I'm going to let it roast first and then we'll put it into a pot where all this can boil. Let's get it in the oven. 425 until they're nice and roasted. seasonings there because we're going to need it for the rest of the turkey. I filled my roasting pan with aromatics. I've got onions. Let me bring in a little closer. I have onions, carrots, celery, and lemons. And I'm going to season all of this up. I did put in a layer of olive oil in the bottom. And then I'm going to start to work on the turkey. I've got the rack in and I'm going to sit the turkey on the rack and uh, just let those drippings go down to the bottom. I'm going to add some wine in here, some chicken broth in here. And uh, what's going to end up in the bottom of this pan is going to be amazing. So let's get the pieces of chicken in. And as I put them in, I'm actually going to season them up. I'm going to start with the breast. And they're going to be a little tight. So just be prepared for that. This is going to be close. They're going to be up close and personal with each other. So I'm adding in a pretty heavy layer of seasoning because the, the turkey is going to season both uh, season itself as well as season the juices down below. So that's one breast. Now I'm putting them in skin up. See if I can, this is a piece of a breast that I'm just going to put in. And I'm actually going to layer it on the bottom. See if I can find the other one. We'll put those in on the bottom so they won't dry out. And you know, I'm using my basic seasoning. Okay, let's get, uh, the other breast. This breast tends to be a little, can be a little bland if you don't season it well. So we've got the breast in. Now we're ready to put our, I think I'll put the wings on the bottom. Because I know they're going to take up a little bit of space. I'm so glad that you all are here today. And for those of you who may be new, I'm Leona Dooley. And this is Ebony, Ivy, and Time. And we are always preparing things that home cooks want to prepare. And you know, I, it's nice to let home cooks know that it doesn't have to be Thanksgiving in order to prepare a turkey. You can prepare a turkey anytime you want to. Actually, this turkey I picked up at a great discount and uh, where other turkeys were running about 30 bucks or more, this one was only 17. So I'll take that. And it's gonna feed a lot of people. So I'm gonna get my wing in, put him right here over that breast so that uh, it will be well taken care of. All right, we're ready for the legs. And we know these legs take up a lot of space. 
and I'm really trying to decide whether I want to break this leg up or cook it whole. I decided to go ahead and break up the, the thigh and the leg just because I thought it would cook faster. And also what I'm going to do is to put a little slit into the side of the of the leg because you know the leg takes the longest to cook so i'm just going to cut right there and try to get as close to that bone as possible i'm cutting all the way down to the bone going to kind of open that up you can see where i opened it up and then just put him in i'm going to do the same over here get him open and a feel for that bone there it is So it will cook and we'll know for sure when it's done. Now I'm going to let this cook until the internal temperature of the parts, all the parts, are going to be about 170. I like 170 over 165. I know some people do 165 and that works for them. But I do not like running the risk of having any little pink bone show up. I want it well prepared. So I'm going to do 170 and then let it rest. So this is going to go into a 400 oven. I've got plenty of time for it to cook. I'm going to cover it with some foil. And um, I'll let it cook at least two hours covered. And then I'll uncover it and let it finish up uncovered. Now before I put the foil on it, I'm going to take some little pieces of butter and just give it a good chop. This butter will melt down and into our juices down underneath, but it also give our turkey a nice color. Let me get a little more. Really, I'll probably end up with about one stick of butter. Just figure that, about one stick. We've got our butter on. I'm going to throw a little more olive oil. Olive oil is always good. Okay. And let's get the foil on. in. I'm going to do that over here. I'm going to add in, I had a piece of bottle of wine. I'm going to put that in, into the bottom. And I'm going to add a box of chicken broth. Now, being just a little careful with the salt, because I know my salt my butter is salted, and my chicken broth has salt. Okay, that's one box. We're going to get this baby covered and 
and it's going to be ready to go. Let's get her in the oven. Okay, baby is in the oven, and uh, I'm going to set this on, I'm going to start it on 400. And I'm going to let it cook at 400 for about 35 minutes. So I'm going to set the timer. Okay, 30 minutes, and then I'll cut it back to 350 and let it finish up for the next about two and a half to three hours. When you're serving a large number of people, it's important to make sure that you have plenty of food. And uh, in this case, we're going to, uh, we've got a very large group coming, and... We need to uh, have plenty of food. So I'm going to get a clean kitchen towel. I've done dishwashing liquid. Everything is dishwashed. Just a little bit of bleach into the water and onto there.
we're going to get this big pot ready to receive all of the roasted turkey. And uh, we're going to add in the aromatics, which of course we need celery. And I'm going to rough chop everything. So I'm just going to put those in and add those to the pan. If we do it now, that will save us a little bit of time later. You know, prepping is always good when you can get things done in advance. And uh, that's exactly what we're doing. Trying to prepare for family who's coming. And uh, we want to make sure that they eat. They have plenty to eat. And that is good. So, there's our celery. There was about six stalks of celery. And uh, I'm going to put in two onions two whole onions but i am going to take the skin off just so you know i'm taking that off and we're going to add that to the pot so we're going to peel the onion skins off okay that was our timer for the top oven where the, where the turkey is. I'm going to cut it back to 350. Okay. And let it go. So until our turkey's ready. It's going to need mm, probably two hours at least. So I'm putting in some, that was a yellow onion. I'm also going to put in a red onion because I like to mix the onions because it just gives it some additional flavor. And you know, when you're dealing with something that uh, can be rather bland, turkey can certainly be that. And a lot of people just don't like turkey. And I'm thinking they probably haven't had it well prepared. So um, we're gonna try to make sure that we do not create people who don't want turkey. We want them to like turkey. So I've got, uh, I think I'll do the same thing to these onions and cut them in half. Cut this one in half as well, right down the middle. So it will release its juices. I'm gonna add in some um, carrots to the mix and salt and pepper it. Okay, I've washed my carrots well, put them in, got them all nice and clean, and I'm gonna put them in. Um, I tried to put them into thirds, just break them up, and put them in. All that's gonna be a part of the gravy. Now, when those, veg when those uh, turkey bones and all those good things are nice and roasted, we're gonna put them in here, gonna cover it with water, put a top on it, and simmer for at least two hours. Well, let's get the roasted vegetables out of the oven and uh, get another glove. Oh, they smell divine. They're nice and roasted. You can see they're coming out. That'll be one oven I can turn off. Okay. 
Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put them over in the, in the pot, and then all of this is going to get covered in water. I filled our roasting pan with uh, nice, cool tap water. And then I started scraping down the sides because I want all of the roasted goodness to be in this water. Then we're gonna very carefully take it over to that pot and pour it over all of those roasted carcass parts. I do believe foil pans were made for turkey days because you can do what you need to do, take it, get all the goodies off of it, mold it up, and place it into either your trash and preferably the trash rather than the recycling because you probably have stuck on food gunk and uh, you don't want to put that into the recycle bin. So into the trash it goes. All right, so our stock is in the process of working. The turkey is in the oven and uh, we're just gonna let that go. Now I pulled a turkey, a turkey uh, neck. No, I pulled the turkey tail and the reason for that is because of the fact that I want to be able to see whether or not it's well seasoned, what I need to add to the mixture. And uh, so I'm just going to give this a little taste. I want it to cool off just a little bit because it was pretty hot. But, mm, good seasoning. And this is your time to know. Hmm. You know, home cooks, tasting is permitted. Because we have to know 
that the food that we're serving our family and friends, we want to know that it's good. We're going to um, get things cleaned up. I'm going to pour off the water and start fresh with everything fresh so that all those little turkey juices are gone because we don't want any of those lingering around. I'm also going to uh, change out my dish towels. You notice I used white because I knew I was going to do a bleach solution. So these nice towels are going to be going into the laundry room and uh, they're going to get cleaned up. So I'm going to do one more wipe, make sure everything's nice and wiped down, and then we'll be ready to talk about the plan for this week. Because when you have guests who are coming to your house, you want to have a plan. You do not want to wait until the last minute and not know what in the world you're going to prepare. So, we're going to work on that. The month of May is coming in like a freight train. So because of that, I really need to make sure that my plan is in place so that I know that I have everything I need ready to go. Now, I've done the plan. I've done the check of all the pantries, the Four Corners pantry to make sure that uh, those things that I had on the grocery list that I didn't buy duplicates of. And uh, so that's been delivered. I've also, um, I've actually sat down and looked at week by week what I plan to, to prepare. Now, we're going to look at our plan and uh, just kind of make sure that we have everything in place so that this week when we have family and friends, we'll make sure we have plenty for them to eat. All right, so here are the dinner plans. For Monday, I'm planning meatloaf with baked potatoes, and I think I'm going to prepare some greens, actually, to go with that. I think that'll be awfully good. And, of course, if you have meatloaf, you, meatloaf, you have to have some gravy. On Tuesday, I'm going to do a Polish sausage um, and have it with slaw, some baked beans, and actually a side of vegetable soup that I, that will be, mm, yum, so good. Um, on Wednesday, we're going to do chili, and we're going to eat up that leftover slaw. On Thursday, we're going to have barbecue chicken, and if there's any slaw left, we'll eat that. But if not, I'm thinking I might put together some potato salad. So that means that I need to bake some extra potatoes when I um, prepare the baked potatoes on Monday. So I'll have plenty of potatoes ready for the potato salad. Now on Friday, you'll see that this is a day when I need uh, spaghetti and uh, meatballs. And we're going to have a side salad. And of course, we'll have lots of good bread. On Saturday, that's where our turkey and dressing is going to come in. So the turkey that we're preparing now, I'll get it nice and sliced up, get it into some broth so it'll stay nicely, put it into some uh, freezer bags, and have that ready to go. So I just have to take that out, put it into some pans, let it warm up, and it's good to go. We're going to have some green beans with that, some mac and cheese. We'll have some gravy, and of course, we'll probably have some uh, cranberry sauce. And for Saturday, since this is their last day, I'm going to serve also um, strawberry shortcakes. And, you know, as usual, Sunday, honey, Mimi's not cooking. There's gonna, we're going to have dinner with friends. And that's going to be sitting at some restaurant.
All right, so we've got the week planned out for our guest because company's coming. And I've even started to kind of plug in for the following week just so just to make sure that I have things in place. I was thinking about breakfast and whether I wanted to do a real from scratch breakfast every morning. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to prepare biscuits. So I prepared biscuits. I have enough to last us a couple of days. And um, I have hash browns in the freezer. And I think I'm going to fix a hash brown casserole for... Um, one of those days. So anyway, we're good. we've got lots of biscuits. We've got um, the hash brown casserole on tap. And one day we might either prepare the waffles or we're going to have waffles out. Not so sure, but we'll see how long and how much energy I have. So let's have fun. Well, the floors are clean, the dishes are clean, the counters are clean, and at this point, we're ready to take the temperature on that turkey because you know it's not going to take as long for the pieces of turkey to bake as it would for a regular turkey. So we're going to check it and see how it's doing. I'll also give you a peek at the... Um, at the broth that we made, the roasted turkey broth that we're working on. So we'll check on that while we're at the stove as well. But I don't know about you, I am wore out. At this point, my turkey is done, but it needs just a little crisping 
for the skin. So I'm going to put it back into the oven for probably about 10 minutes and turn the heat up just a little oh, bit yeah. so that it can crisp up the skin. I'm going to cook the same for just a few we'll minutes after broil just so the skin that? can get nice Two and brown. hours. That's all it took.
I can tell you this. This girl is plum tuckered out. Here's the broth off of the actual turkey. And it smells wonderful. You can smell the wine that went into it. So I know that's going to be really good for gravy. These two containers are full of turkey broth. Uh, just from the roasted uh, turkey carcass and all of its pieces and bones. So you can tell how nice and deep and rich that that looks. So that's going to be delicious. Now let me take you over to the stove. Here I have all of the pieces of the carcass. I still need to go through and debone that because um, that would make a delicious turkey salad if I have enough pieces. So I may try that. As well as we have a pan full of turkey that is going to have to cool. And once it cools, we'll slice it, put it into Ziploc bags, throw a little broth in there, and it will be ready for dinner the night that um, we choose to have turkey. So, turkey, turkey, turkey. The house is finished. The floors are finished. The turkey is finished. And uh, the rest of the meals I can do the night of. You know, they, they aren't that... Uh, hard to uh, put together, but the turkey, I really did want to get out of the way because you know that requires a lot of time and requires oven time. So uh, that particular night, we're gonna have macaroni and cheese, some green beans. So I'm gonna need the oven for the mac and cheese because um, my baby girls love macaroni and cheese. So Mimi has to get that ready. So, I'm looking forward to uh, your sitting right here at the table of Ebony, Ivy, and Time. And I'm so glad I don't think I could have made it through today without all of your conversation, warm thoughts, and, you know, lots of love. So, we have got a lot accomplished today. So, let's get it done. Let's enjoy our family and friends. And remember, when you have company coming, then planning ahead is necessary. And whatever you can do that is going to save you time, get it done. Okay? All right. I'm Leona Dooley, and this is Ebony Ivy in Time, and I hope you've had an absolutely blessed time. I'll see you soon, right here in the kitchen.